Uh, Mr. Chair, Ms. Morgan, uh, this is a yes or no question. I take it from your testimony that with respect to the reassessment process that is underway with respect to each of the projects that had been approved by the previous corrupt board, the scope of the reassessments are to determine whether those projects satisfy the enhanced contribution agreement in order to be eligible for funding, but does not include reviewing conflicts of interest that may have resulted in those projects receiving funding by the previous corrupt board. Is that correct? Yes or no? Uh, Mr. Chair, we are reviewing um, the projects independently to assess their eligibility as recommended by the Auditor General. Uh, no. I, oh. I asked specifically with respect to conflicts of interest, wrongdoing, and so on, because the Auditor General found 186 conflicts, $330 million that went out the door involving conflicts, including $76 million tax dollars, in which board members actually deliberated and voted on approving funding that went into companies that they had interest in. Is that part of the reassessment process, yes or no? Mr. Chair, if fraud or wrongdoing is found as part of our review of these projects, the board will take appropriate action. Well, well, Ms. Morgan, how is it possible to identify fraud and wrongdoing if that's not part of the reassessment process? M Mr. Chair, there are strength and conflict of interest pro provisions that have been put in place, and no funding will be restarted without um, those conflict of interest as, um, issues also being taken into account. So we're looking at the eligibility reviews by independent assessors, and we're looking at, um, at and we're looking at all of the issues before we restart. And should we find any evidence of fraud or wrongdoing, of course the board will take appropriate action. Why, why is that not part of the reassessment process? Mr. Chair, the reassessment process that we're talking about vis-a-vis -vis eligibility is what was recommended by the Auditor General, and we put that in place with independent reviewers, well, two independent reviewers per project, be, to assess eligibility. Okay, that was thank, the thank recommendation you for that. that the Auditor uh, General it's, made. It's very clear, or it seems to be clear, that uh, priority is to get funding out the door, but much less of a priority is rooting out the corruption and conflicts involving hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars. Now, uh, Ms. Doyle stated, uh, if we find any evidence of wrongdoing on the part of a recipient, uh, the board will take action on recovery. What action has been taken to date to recover monies that improperly went out the door where there was wrongdoing? Because Ms. we already know of instances where that has been clearly established. What steps have been taken? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the process of reviewing the projects for eligibility is really at the beginning stage, and um, we've started to review those projects. Um, we are looking at a process to um, restart funding that will address issues of eligibility um, and conflict of interest for previously approved projects. And we will only restart funding, Mr. Chair, in cases where um, these projects have been approved for eligibility independently and the board has had a cl very close look at them as the Auditor General has recommended. Well, I asked Ms. Doyle, and I didn't receive a satisfactory answer, that in the case of Annette Versharon, the former chair of the board, $220,000 went improperly out the door, funneled into her own company. This was identified uh, in the Auditor General's report, and Ms. Versharon has been found guilty by the Ethics Commissioner of violating the Conflict of Interest Act in respect of those payments. It's been months since Ms. Versharon has been found guilty. What is the interim board doing to recover those funds? What is the interim board waiting for in that clear black and white case of corruption and conflict? Mr. Chair, it's very important that we follow a clear and transparent process, and that is what the board has put in place. We will have independent reviews, two independent reviews for process, for, for, per project. We'll assess each project for eligibility. Um, we're, for we're eligibility, we're but not conflicts this, and corruption. We're collecting, conducting these reviews as per the Auditor General's report.